Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another audio programming tutorial for beginners. And today, what we're going to talk about is getting uh, is using MIDI to control the synthesizer that we've built up to this point. Now, MIDI stands for Musical Interface Digital. Uh, musical. It stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Okay, and it was created in the early '80s. And it's a protocol where we could use uh, different different digital musical instruments and uh, MIDI controllers to basically communicate with each other and stay on the same page. What's fascinating about this protocol is that uh, it was created, I believe, in 1981 or 1982, and that the protocol that was created in 81 or 82 uh, is still the protocol that we use today. There haven't been any changes, any sort of improvements. Uh, that is, is the exact same protocol that was used in the early 80s, and that is really interesting. I think Google were doing some uh, some research into ways to expand um, the, the capability of MIDI or to improve upon this model. But at the moment, we're still operating with version 1.0, which is really remarkable. So the way that we're going to do this is there's a couple different ways that we can uh, that we can establish MIDI control in Max. But I'm going to go with the most simple way. And the reason is, well, one, because this is a tutorial for beginners. And also because the way that I, that I prefer to kind of code is to establish kind of a basic functionality, a basic primitive kind of let's get everything off the ground, let's get everything working. And then as we need more features and more functionality that we can basically add on that, you know, underneath that and peel the layers of the onion back as we need to. Okay, so we don't have to have too many kind of moving parts going on at the same time. So this, in my opinion, is one of the most easy ways to get MIDI functionality and get a, get a MIDI keyboard connected up to um, a synthesizer or a device. And um, I hope you find uh, you you agree. Okay. Uh, another another thing that I should express is that if you ever need help, there's so many. Uh, there's there's really a great uh, reference that Max has. And so if you just go up to help and then go into reference, you can go in here and you can actually type in MIDI or you can type in just an, an object name. And normally there's some sort of tutorial. You can open the tutorial and normally there's a bit of code there and you, it, it really, you know, goes out of its way to really try to help you, you know, uh, make uh, code effectively. So, so what we're going to do first is we need to think about, okay, well, how can we figure out what devices that we have that we're able to, um, to use for our, uh, for our MIDI functionality? So I have a MIDI keyboard connected up here, okay? And we have this object. It's called MIDI Info. And it just says, fill a pop-up menu with MIDI device names, okay? So let's say that I didn't... Um, that I didn't know how I needed to use this object. Okay, what we could do is, as I discussed last tutorial, we can just press and hold Alt and click, and then it gives us a nice little description in here, as well as normally an example that shows how these uh, how these objects work. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. We have the MIDI info object. We have this uh, this menu. It's called a U menu. Okay, and then we have a, uh, a bang message that we need to send to it just to just to populate the just to populate the menu with the options that we have okay so we're just going to set that up now if I just press B to make a bang okay and then if I press U menu and here we have this blank menu And then if I just lock my patch up by pressing Command E, and I hit bang. There we go. We have our, the name of our uh, MIDI devices. So we have this uh, device here. This is my MIDI keyboard, CME UF port 1. And I can just click that there. And now I'm locked in. Okay. So now we've gotten Max to see the, uh, to see the devices that we have available. And now we can just have a, have, start having a look at how we can actually get the the notes into into Max. So there's another object 
I believe it's called note in receive many note messages okay so we have this we don't need to connect it up to this other object it just kind of operates on its own okay now we have three different outlets here okay we have our pitch and our velocity and MIDI channel okay we just we're just gonna kind of worry about the first two okay so pitch just refers to the frequency okay so if I just hook up a a message box here so you can find out what a message is outputting just by setting just by creating a message box and then setting the connecting it to the right inlet of the message box okay and if I press a key Okay, I'm seeing this number 49. So these are actual MIDI notes. Okay, so this isn't what we call frequency. Okay, these are actual MIDI notes. Okay, what they what they call MIDI note numbers. Okay, and we're going to have to, uh, in order to get this working properly, we're going to have to convert this to frequency. Okay, so that we can connect it with our frequency box up here. Okay, so... What I can do, there's another object that's called M2F as MIDI, convert a MIDI note to frequency. Okay. And then if I put the message box, if I put a message box back here, and then if I put a, another message box next to what's coming out of the, uh, out of the pitch outlet, you'll see that I have MIDI note 42 translates into uh, 92.48 Hertz okay so let me just so if I hit like middle C um, I think that's middle C that's MIDI note 54 and that translates to 184.997208 okay so at this point what we can do is we can just actually take this okay we have a we have an issue in that this is an integer, so this is like a this is a whole number. We need to we need to convert this to a float because if we go back here, we can see that this is a float. A float just means a decimal number. One eighty four point nine nine is a float. Okay, if it was just one eighty four, then it could be just an integer. So we just need to make sure that we have that same accuracy with our uh, with our box here. So what I could do is I could just go into the inspector. And it's an integer right now, and I'm just gonna make that a float. And as you can see, there's a decimal point, a little decimal point there that lets me know that that's a float now. Okay. I can erase this number box, and then I can just take this M2F. I can just connect it now, and let's just see if it changes the frequency as we would like it to. Okay. So now we see that the frequency is changing with the press of the keys okay so we're so we're kind of halfway there okay now what we have is if we go to velocity so if we just think if, if, if we just think for a moment about what happens you know if we're on a MIDI controller and we press a key well we the computer needs to know a couple different things it needs to know what key we're pressing it needs to know how long we're pressing the key for and it also needs to know how long we're pressing or, or how hard we're going to we hit the key okay so what key we're hitting how long we're holding it for and how how hard or what velocity we're hitting the key at okay and that's what velocity refers to okay now um, velocity just goes from uh on a mini keyboard they've set it up where it goes from zero to 127 zero just being like the note hasn't been hit and then 127 obviously being the very hardest that it can be struck okay so you can see that when i'm when i'm hitting this key it's coming up with values of 95 when i release the key it goes back to zero which is great we don't have to worry about node on node off uh functionality okay if i hit it gently you can see that there's that that there's just a velocity of one, there's 37. Okay, so the harder we hit it, the higher the number is. And those numbers go from zero to 127. Okay, now we have an issue here in that this is going from zero to 127, but then if we go, if we look at where we were triggering our note from, 
this this trigger. This is a value of zero, of uh, a, a value from zero to one. Okay, so what we need to do is we just need to kind of scale this object. Okay, we need to use what's called a scale, and this is this is a common um, this is a common thing that we need to do in programming, where we say we have a number that goes from zero to one twenty seven. Okay. So the numbers that are coming out of this, out of this velocity, out of this velocity uh, outlet are going from zero to 127. Okay. But I want to scale that. Okay. Where I'm saying, now I'm saying I want it to go from zero to one. Okay. So let's just take a look at what difference that makes when, as I'm, as I press the keys. Okay, so I'm going to set up, so I'm going to connect one to just a message box just, just to show you what's coming out of this, uh, out of this note, note in outlet. And then I'm going to connect another one that shows you the result of what we're, of what we get after I scale the object. Okay, so if I press and hold it, okay, you'll see that the velocity is 95 coming out of the note in object. But once I've scaled it, it gives us a velocity of 0.74 okay because if I just if I if I were just to um, connect this velocity over to where I normally am triggering the um, the note from then it would either blow it up or not or just not do anything because it's expecting a value from 0 to 1 okay so that's the reason that we need to use this scale the scale object okay it just kind of recalculates the the math and skews it down or skews it or, or scales it up and then we're able to use it as we need okay so I, so now I can take and I can connect that to where my trigger is now okay and I can just delete this and now we can see if we get any functionality okay and as I'm hitting the keys you can you can see that it's actually given us that functionality now. And that is the best, that is the easiest way that we can get functionality going between a MIDI keyboard and into Max. Okay, and that's where I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna end things from this point. And what we can do maybe next tutorial uh, is either make this connection polyphonic okay so we can look at you know because at the moment I can only press one key at a time okay if I wanted it to be able to express multiple keys at once I have to add polyphonic polyphonic functionality to that and um, that's a whole different that's a whole different level that we need to discuss so we can um, what I'll what I'll do for now is I think next one we'll go into um, basic filtering, just getting a basic filter hooked up and just different kinds of filters. And then once we once we get a filter, once we get a filter done, then we can come back and we can start improving on the functionality by adding uh, polyphony to our synthesizer. So that's where I'm going to end this tutorial today. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just drop me a comment or a message and I will see you next time.